So we'll start with the green network, which we can see here is at gigabit 0 slash 0. So I'll say interface gigabit 0 slash 0. And we need to configure our IPv4 address. And we'll say IP address 192.168.4. And I believe the address is supposed to be the first address in the network, the first usable address, which would be 65. And the subnet mask, 255.255.255.192. Type no shut, which will activate the interface. And we have our IP address. Now, what about our IPv6 address? The IPv6 address is the first address in the network. So that should be fairly easy as well. So I'll type IPv6 address 2001 colon DB8 colon cc 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 colon one colon colon one slash 64 which is the network prefix now we have our global unicast address in ipv6 and we need our link local address so i'll type ipv6 address fe80 colon colon one and then link dash local and that sets our link local address so now this interface is complete and we need to move to the next interface I'll type interface gigabit 0 slash 1 and then I'll do up arrow till we get to the IP address and this address will be the first usable address in the second subnet that we were that we created which was the 192 subnet and the first usable address in that subnet is 193 and the subnet mask was 255.255.255.240 I'll turn on the interface and then up arrow for the IPv6 addresses so this is the second subnet I just use the up arrow on my keyboard to arrow back to the previous command history and you can see here I can just change using the arrows on my keyboard to the second subnet which is easy and then up arrow again till I get to the link local address which is the same exact address and so now I have that interface complete if I look through the rest of the commands here or the list the rest of the configuration tasks rather you can see that 17 deals with the switch 18 says backup r1 the running configuration file to the tftp server and then 19 says save the configuration to the startup config so that's what we're going to do now so what i'll do is i'll type exit and then exit again i'll save my configuration copy run space start that saves my configuration I hit enter and now I need to back up to the TFTP server now to do this I need to know what address is the TFTP server the TFTP server the server gets the second address in the subnet so on the 192 network it'll be 194 so I'll say copy run TFTP hit enter and provide the that address and hit enter and destination file name r1-config I'm gonna accept the default by just pressing enter and you can see it's writing the configuration file right now and you can see that I've got a couple exclamation marks here it looks like it worked okay 1041 bytes excellent so now I believe I'm done with R1 and it's time to configure the switches. If before you exit the router you want to run a few tests just to make sure that you've done some of these things correctly, a couple of things that I can re recommend are doing a show run to look at your running configuration file and check things like your host name, your enable secrets been set, there's my IPv6 unicast routing, you can see there the IP SSH version 2. There's the user that we created named admin, the domain name, your interfaces, 
Um, also the banner, your line console zero and your line VTY. So that all looks good. You could also try to ping, let's say one of the hosts I'll try to ping the host at 4.69. You can see it took a second for ARP to resolve the MAC address, but then it worked. And I can also try to ping 70. So that works. And another thing that I can do is I could open up, let's say, I close the terminal window here or exit out. Let's exit out first. And you can see here now when I press return, it asks me for a username. This is typically uh, not the case if you're not doing a login local and you're just doing a regular login, it'll just ask for a password. So now I have to type in admin and then the password Dan's courses and I'm in. And I can also test the enable to see if that worked. Class one, two, three, four, five, and that works. Let's close the terminal, open up a command prompt and see if we can SSH into the device. If I do SSH and then I put a dash and a question mark, you can see the usage for the SSH command built into the PC. Now a Windows machine usually doesn't have an SSH client uh, available from the command prompt, but here in Packet Tracer, they've built an SSH client right into the PC, which is really helpful. So all I have to do is do SSH and then dash L for login, my username, which is admin, and then the target IP address, which is 192.168.4. Let's see here, the first address in the network would be 65. So I hit that, you can see it's open. It asked me for a password. I'll put in Dan's courses and hit enter. And you can see there's my banner message of the day. I can type enable class one, two, three, four, five. And you can see that I now have privileged user access to the router through basically an SSH remote administrative connection. So that's working quite nicely. So we are ready to move on and go to the switches and configure the switches.